Hello, in this video I will talk about visualizing different statistical visual uh, distributions and uh, different ways of how you can do that using Matplotlib. So first of all, um, just a quick word on uh, variables in Python. You can, since Python 3, actually use Unicode um, as variables. And as you can see in this example here, uh, the variables mu and sigma, they actually are the characters for mu and sigma. Uh, this was not possible in Python 2. But now in Python 3, this is possible. Um, but just, um, yeah, don't use this too much because this can actually be a little bit confusing. And um, if you name your variables clearly, it's often easier to understand what they mean instead of just writing one Unicode character, which you have to interpret other ways. Uh, but um, you can uh, write these Unicode characters by um, starting with a backslash and then just writing the name of the character you want to write. So for example, for the mu, you would write mu and then hit tab. And uh, the Jupyter Notebook will then automatically insert the um, Unicode character for you. So just a quick quick note on that. And um, here we'll just create a thousand random values from a normal distribution using this um, mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. Okay, so now let's uh, visualize this data. And the first way we want to visualize this is using histograms. And histograms are a very common way to uh, visualize statistical distributions. And they just show you um, yeah, how many of the values fall into certain bins. And if we use the uh, hist function from matplotlib, this will um, just figure out um, what kind of data we have. In this case, we just put in a, a NumPy array, a one-dimensional NumPy array. And um, yeah, this will create a histogram with a certain number of bins. And here, as you can see, um, not too many bins. There, there's a default number, but of course we can change that as well. If we, for example, have a wide range and we want more bins, um, then we can just um, yeah pass the parameter bins and set it to 500, for example. And um, yeah, this might be a little much for this distribution, but uh, yeah, there might be use cases if you, um, for you to, to have 500 bins, but you can set that to any arbitrary number, uh, whatever you think fits best. But you can also just let Matplotlib uh, decide on its own which number of bins should be good for the data you put in. If you just pass auto as a string to the bins argument, then it will um, automatically figure out what uh, would be a good number for the bins of your of your data. Okay, um, as you can see, the um, bins actually count the number, the absolute number of um, values that are in this bin. And um, here for, uh, for this case, uh, they go up to like 110, 115, um, but Sometimes it's very useful to interpret these histograms as probability distributions, especially if you're talking about um, some distribution, some statistical distribution. There are oftentimes um, probability distributions, and Matplotlib can autom automatically convert your uh, your data into probability distributions. And for that, you just have to pass the density argument and set it to true. And if you do that, you can see um, that your your bins here go up to maybe like 0.42, something like that. Um, and in total, they should all add up to one. So this is now a probability distribution, which you can use to um, yeah interpret your data in some way. Okay, the next visualization are uh, box plots. And if you don't know what box plots are, you can have a look at this link here, uh, which explains uh, how they work and what the different parts of them mean. I don't want to get into box plots in, in this lecture because it's about visualiz visualization and not about the actual plots themselves. But um, yeah, we can use the box plot function from matplotlib to draw box plots. And we also pass um, just a one dimensional numpy array here, which is used to um, yeah create this box plot. If we run this, you can see we get a pretty normal looking box plot. Um, this orange line in the middle here is the median. 
and uh, these whiskers go out to 25% uh, quantile and the 75% quantile and then you can see these uh, circles represent the outliers. Um, there are also many different ways you can customize these box plots in matplotlib. Um, change the colors, uh, change the look, there are many different options. And um, yeah, if you don't want to have them looking uh, default like this, um, yeah, there are lots of parameters you can pass to this box plot function to change uh, the looks of it. And uh, one convenient way is that if you have multiple data distributions, so just multiple data sets, multiple one-dimensional arrays, then you can visualize them um, in one call directly. And in this cell here, we just create uh, many arrays. And um, as you can see in this list comprehension here, we call the random normal function multiple times with different means and sigmas. And um, we also even create different um, size, different sized arrays. So in the nums uh, list here, we have the uh, the num the uh, the amount of values we want to create, uh, generate in each uh, iteration of this list comprehension. And then this uh, wrapper lib um, is just a uh, yeah a module to visualize um, visualize data. Um, or Python objects in a different way, which sometimes makes more sense because if we were just to if we were to just print disks using the normal wrapper function, um, then this would be a lot, and we couldn't really see um, yeah you know, what exactly we did. I can just show you that if we print disks, uh, we we don't really see um, yeah clearly what our data is. But using this uh, wrapper lib, um, we get a more concise way of printing our data. Okay, but coming back to the box plots, we can just pass this list of arrays to our box plot function now, and it will draw multiple box plots for each of the uh, arrays inside this list. All right, then the next um, visualization are violin plots. And again, if you don't know what they are, um, you can have a look at the Wikipedia page here, um, which explains how how they come together and what the different parts of it mean. But um, I'm just here to talk about how you can create them in matplotlib. And you do that using the violin plot function. And uh, you can just pass the one dimensional numpy array. And this will create the violin plot for you here. And it will internally use a kernel density estimate um, yeah, to generate these curves here and um, figure out everything it needs to know um, from the data that you pass to it. And similarly as with the box plot, you can also pass multiple distributions and it will automatically uh, draw multiple violin plots, which is again very handy to compare different, um, yeah, different distributions that you might have. Alright, and the last um, function I want to talk about for statistical distributions are pie charts. Um, they're very common and you probably know how they look. And matplotlib has a way of visualizing uh, pie charts, of course. And um, yeah, for that we need some sizes. So the sizes of each of the pieces of the pie. Um, these can be, yeah, these can sum up to, to some arbitrary number. Matplotlib will figure out um, how to um, yeah, cut the pie basically into different pieces such that these sizes are represented correctly. And then um, we also have a tuple of labels here. Uh, we just yeah, picked some random words and um, these can be assigned to the different sizes. And then the way you draw the pie chart is by calling x.py. So the pie function will create the pie chart and you pass the sizes, um, which is just our list here. And then uh, we have to pass the additional labels uh, argument and we just set this to the tuple labels here. And then we also pass this auto percent um, uh, keyword argument here. And this will, um, yeah, this will tell matplotlib how to label the different pieces of the pie. And um, yeah, what you have to pass to this keyword argument is either a format string or a function. 
and in this case we pass a format string and uh, the way this works is you have the percent sign at the beginning which tells it that this is a format string and these are a little different uh, from the f strings in uh, in the normal python but um, yeah the the default concept is the same just the syntax is a little different so the percentage sign here tells matplotlib that this is a format string then what follows after is uh, the description of the number which should be displayed and in this case here um, this 1.1f tells it that it should um, yeah it should create a decimal number so the f means float it should create a decimal number with one uh, decimal place and then um, these two percentage signs at the end tell it to draw a percentage sign after the number and um, the second percentage sign basically means draw this character and the first percentage sign basically escapes it because the percentage sign in this format string is a special character um, which if you write it will be interpreted in a different way than just the normal character and that's why we have to escape it using another percentage sign. So if we run this cell, we can um, see that we have now got a pie chart and um, these numbers from the format string are uh, written inside the different pieces and the labels that were specified using the labels argument are written around um, outside of the chart. Uh, 